Welcome to another entry in my Resident Evil lore series covering the files. The set of diaries, notes, and reports left behind describing the horrors of the Resident Evil universe. It's been a while, but last time I covered the Plant 42 report, chronicling the creation and growth of Umbrella's hungry monster plant. This time we'll be visiting the world of Resident Evil 2 Remake and the tragic accounts coming from within the Raccoon City Orphanage, a place that should provide a home and safety for the parentless children of the world. Instead, it became something far, far worse. Before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to all of my Patreon members for your continued support. You guys help make this channel possible and contribute to keeping these videos flowing. If you'd like to have your name up here too, gain exclusive benefits like sneak peeks at upcoming content, detailed progress updates behind the scenes, access to the Discord exclusive channel, and early access to my big videos, go to patreon.com forward slash gamerthumbtv, or click the link in the description to get started. And now the Orphanage Diaries. Even before the Raccoon City outbreak, Umbrella had a stranglehold on its institutions, supported by corruption from the city's highest offices. At some point in Raccoon City's history, enough donations were raised to build an orphanage. What the public believed was a sign of hope for lost children was actually a facility run by Umbrella and Police Chief Brian Irons was placed in charge of keeping their darkest secrets hidden. The children taken in by the orphanage were never going to find a family that would care for them. In fact, they were taken in as research subjects for their viral experiments. Umbrella scientists injected them with unknown fluids and prevented them from leaving the grounds. Children disappearing was a common occurrence, explained away as adoptions. The children of Raccoon City Orphanage were perhaps the most helpless, unknown victims of Umbrella's evil. And the stories left behind showcase the absolute fear and paranoia the children lived with. Sally's diary is found during Claire's campaign, while playing as Sherry in the orphanage. It's found on the second floor in the hallway, just beyond the bedroom. Sally's diary is written over the course of a couple of days by a young child, and identifies the man responsible for everything that happens in the orphanage, Chief Irons. It starts on January 4th, and reads as follows. Wednesdays are perfectly great days because we get snacks and ice cream. I hate the last place I was at. The teachers were all meanies. It was just study, 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 and there wasn't no ice cream. I love, love, love it here. January 10th. There was an important rule made today. Everyone must write a diary, get health checkups, and we ain't allowed outside by ourselves. It's good we don't have to go to school. I don't want to go and get picked on for my old clothes, especially not by the guy that used to wear them. January 16th. The orphanage director's coming today, so I'm going to wear my most favoritest checkered blue outfit. The director is tall, the director has a mustache, the director is a policeman. During that same Sherry segment in the orphanage, in the front hall first floor over on a table, Tom's diary can be found. Written by an older child that was becoming suspicious after attempting to contact his friend Oliver, another child that was supposedly adopted. It begins on February 5th and reads, It's been two months since I sent that letter to Oliver, and all I've gotten back is not a zip. Then again, they're all like that once they get adopted. Betty's living like a king in some fancy folks home and forgotten all about us. Really thought that Oliver was different, that he'd be my friend for life. Guess I'm just a fool. February 8th. Anne sat all the little kids down and told them a story today. She said all the kids that get adopted are turned into food for the boogeymen. That's why no one hears from them ever again. Not sure where she gets her ideas from, but she sure got the mind for writing trashy horror novels. February 13th. There's something weird going on around here. And it's not just because of Anne's stories. Don't get me wrong, I've been in worse places, and this place is funded by some big drug company. But why can't we call people or go outside? Why are there so many doctors around? What's with these shots every day? It's almost like where... The entry ends abruptly. February 14th. I'm getting adopted. Me. Most people go for younger kids, so I figured I was too old. But I can't say I'm not a little happy. Who am I getting? I'm totally psyched. I say goodbye to this place on the 20th gonna try my best to be a good son, someone my new mom and pop can be proud of. February 19th. Oliver came back in the middle of the night all messed up, screaming, help me and stuff. I didn't even recognize him at first. His face was all peeling and melted off. He's with the teachers and doctors now. It's just a skin thing, they say. He'll get better soon. And then we can go on adventures together again. Tom's diary describes Oliver's escape from the testing Umbrella was doing on him. For two months, they experimented on him with the Epsilon T virus strain, but his escape didn't uncover Umbrella's true activities. It exposed the rest of the orphanage to the T virus, and Umbrella acted swiftly to remove the other children. While playing as Claire in the orphanage, a letter from the director could be found just beyond the second floor nursery, presumably written by Chief Irons himself. 
The letter from the director describes Umbrella's brutal countermeasures to secure the orphanage. It states, Regarding the incident in question, I'm glad to report that it has all been taken care of. On February 19th, test subject 628 escaped from the lab and broke into our facility. 628 was originally from this facility's candidate pool and apparently returned in the hope of seeking help. 628 was quickly detained by our staff. As 628 was undergoing one of the lab's clinical trials, there was the distinct possibility that he brought the virus with him, so we disposed of all of our test subject candidates as a precaution. Their speedy disposal was conducted by the security team, to whom I'd like to extend my thanks. As for our neighbors, we told them that due to the building's dilapidated state, we've temporarily moved all the children to a different orphanage for their safety. As to the future of this facility, once it's been fully decontaminated, I plan to resume securing more test candidates. The letter from the director coldly describes the execution of all the living children inside the orphanage due to one attempted escape. And the final orphanage diary can be found by Sherry on a counter in the first floor director's room, written by an unidentified younger child that had barely learned how to write. As the virus spread through Raccoon City, the replacement children in the orphanage were left to fend for themselves as the infected roamed the halls. This child's entry reads in misspelled and incorrectly written English, If you're reading this, go call police. Boogeyman's here, eating everybody. Many more boogeyman's here. Help. They're coming. Help me, mommy. And those are the orphanage diaries found in Resident Evil 2 Remake. Let me know in the comments section what you thought of this video and what other files you'd like me to cover. I'll catch you guys later.